These tell you where you're going, kind of like the dashboard on a car. How much gas do we have? What's our speed, this and that. There are certain numbers that you should be tracking as a contractor. Now, fighters, many are intimidated by what it means to know your numbers in this training here today, a few minutes we have together. I'm gonna share some things that I'm hoping will make it a whole lot less daunting for you because, you know, listen, the last thing you wanna do is run a business and not make any money we have a rule in the contractor fight don't fuck with the money yes the craft is important customer service is important all these things are important but your service should make you money the craftsmanship should make you money high profits and high prices in the absence of value is unethical the first thing that will make you knowing your numbers make knowing your numbers easier for you you must keep your financials up to date. You don't want to get behind on this. Don't be one of those contractors that walks into their CPA at the end of the year with a box full of receipts and ask them to let you know if you made money or not. You should know each and every week throughout the year if you're making money or not. And you do that, number one, guys, by getting a tool, right? We love tools here at the contractor fight. Number one tool is like a software like QuickBooks. We use QuickBooks. A lot of our clients use it. I don't care what you use, but use something like QuickBooks so that you keep track of this shit and be a real business. Incomplete data does you no good. I can't tell you how many times I sit down with a contractor to help them with their numbers. I mean, guys, I'm not going to lose it. I'm not going to see. I did it. I, I did like a little internally there. I did that. Keep your data up to date. Damn it. Try to say that. Keep your data up to date. <laughs> Yeah. Number two, the next tool is a bookkeeper. I don't care if your wife was better than you in math that doesn't qualify her to do the books. Most, I will tell you this, most companies that I've worked with over the past decade or so, when we put our eyes on their books, if they have something like QuickBooks, 90% or so are not categorized properly. Chart of accounts are messed up and it skews the books and makes things harder to understand and budget and plan for a business. Hire a real bookkeeper that works with contractors. So many non-contracting bookkeepers screw the books up all the time. Third tool under keeping your shit up to date, make sure you're having a regular money meeting each and every week and then have a monthly recap meeting. I don't care if it's just you and your bookkeeper. If you're a one person show in one of my old companies, every Thursday at one o'clock, my business partner and our office manager and our bookkeeper had a meeting that lasted about two hours and they went over everything about the numbers that week. What's owed to us? Who do we owe? What projects are finishing in the next couple days that we're going to be able to invoice for? Guys, if you're not having this regular money meeting in your business on a weekly basis to see where things are at, you're doing yourself a disservice. And then having the macro meeting each month where you're looking at once all the books are reconciled in QuickBooks by your bookkeeper, you can look back on the previous month. How did we do? Were we on budget? Did we spend more on overhead than we thought we would? It was a, Where was our gross profit? So in real time, if there's things that are not going as planned and you're unprofitable, you could catch them right away. Helps with cash flow and those things. So keep your financials up to date. Number two big tip I want to give you here. Set and track your KPIs. Those are key performance indicators. These tell you where you're going. Kind of like the dashboard on a car. How much gas do we have? What's our speed? This and that. There are certain numbers that you should be tracking as a contractor. Now, you could go crazy with number after number after number after number of things that you could track, but I want to share five quick ones with you here that if you're not tracking any KPIs, did you start doing it right away? Number one, track your leads. If you don't know how many times the phone is ringing or forms are being filled out, people are reaching out to your company, you're going to have a hard time setting and achieving sales goals. Second thing, your sales close rate. For every 10 leads that comes in, how many turn into money? That's data that you're going to need to know. Number three, your average job size. So many people don't know their average job size. And you guys always say it. I go, what's your average job size? And you go, well, they're all different. No shit. That's why there's an average. Fourth thing, fourth KPI, your actual actual income that comes in in a given period of time, like on a monthly basis versus your predicted income. If you're creating a budget and you're going, we're going to bring in $75,000 a week. Then you look at the actual and you bring it in $32,000 a week. You're not on track and you're going to be in trouble. And the fifth thing, gross profit margin. How much are we keeping? Get it up there, make it at a 50 or better, and your life will be easier. Guys, there's, like I said, there's so many more KPIs that you can track. These are the few that you can start with to help you know your numbers. And in time, as it makes sense, you can add other ones. <sighs> 
I haven't smoked crack in like three weeks and I'm still out of breath, man. It's crazy. I don't know. <laughs> Third thing to help you get a handle on knowing your numbers, job cost every project. This actually could have been the first thing you could do. In my experience, for me personally, nothing woke my ass up about the math in my business like job costing did. And guys, what that is, is it's you're watching the game film right after you play the game. That's what job costing is. That way you can make adjustments on the next game, the next project you do. So you have an estimated performance. Hey, this job's going to take 50 man hours, and this is how much we're going to spend and material and then on the other end of the job when it's done job costing is nothing more than looking back and going how many actual hours was it were we over or under what we thought and the same with materials and this and that when you make these real-time adjustments and your job costing and you're comparing estimated to actual performance, it keeps you from getting to a point in your business where at the end of the year, you're wondering why you don't have any money. I promise you, if you job cost, and one of the things we try to teach people to do here, you job cost every project you do within 24 hours of doing it, at least the man hours. I know some of the receipts for materials and stuff might not come in, I get that. But the man hours should be easy to keep track of if you have your shit together in the field and you're managing your jobs properly. So guys, listen, I appreciate you hanging with me here today. Hopefully this takes a little bit of the intimidation factor away from what it means to know your numbers. If you want to get some help in your business and have a conversation about how to move faster and go deeper on some of these things, and you want to talk to somebody on the Contractor Fight team, go to thecontractorfight.com forward slash help, and you'll be able to book a call with one of our kick-ass team members. You guys rock. I got to roll. I'm out.